Welcome, Michael. Thank you for joining Hello. us. Hey, um, so Michael, you're, we've known each other for quite a while uh, back in the Drupal community. Um, so you've been, I didn't know that you, you, you used to work, uh, that you used to work in the Swiss military. I, I didn't know that part. Uh, so that's, um, you're actually, um, that's partially also where your career started. Uh, that, that was interesting, I didn't know. Um, so, but today you're um, one of the founders and CTO for uh, Amazi.io. And I think that's in the, that role that um, you've got some interesting thoughts to share with us. Um, so with that, um, take it away, Michael. Um, looking Thank forward you. To Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah. And first of all, sorry for time zone issues. I guess we all realized that GMT and London time is not the same, but um, thanks to all to jump in and cover for me. But um, yeah, here we are. Hello, everybody. Um, great to be here. Yes. Like Christoph already said in introductions, we want to talk about data and we want to talk about specifically data with AI and LLMs. And actually, I only realized later um, we should actually have called this session uh, much more instead of, dude, where's my car? We should have called it, dude, where's my data? Um, because that's what I really want to talk about today is to learn much more about what are the risks and concerns we have around data and specifically with AI. Um, like you already heard, um, yes, I'm Michael Schmidt. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Amazi.io. I'm actually from Switzerland, and that's where also the requirements um, of going to the Swiss military, like all males. Um, I spent quite some time in the military. Um, but now, right now, I live in the US um, with my wife. Um, I moved to the US a couple of years ago. And yeah, for me, it's all about open source. And you will hear much more about open source just um, in this presentation as well, because hint, hint. Why we believe that's one of the solutions for some of the of the problems we are concerned. So what we want to talk about is data protection, data sovereignty. And honestly, it's always hard to really understand. So instead of just saying these words, um, some people say like, oh, it's about storing and handling data. But again, for me, I'm an engineer. I need to understand stuff very clearly. So for me, it's all about, okay, what does this actually actually mean and for me it means that a my data is stored and handled in an encrypted way um, and also they are stored and processed only in approved locations and i as a user i want to approve i want to know which data goes because in the end even though the internet is global from a data protection from a law it's all about where the data is actually stored so it's very different if this data is stored in switzerland or in germany or in the us or let's say in china and um, always the local laws apply so um, for my personal data specifically obviously very highly sensitive data i want to ensure that this data is stored in specific locations and i also want to know um, or I want to ensure that the data is only accessible by the least amount of people and companies that I really need to. Like, I don't want that everybody knows uh, my birth date or everybody knows my, um, let's say, uh, if I interact with a health bot, like an, a mental health bot. I don't want that everybody can read this suddenly and then it gets leaked and things like that. And, all, and I also want to make sure that the data is only used for things I approve of. Let's say I'm using an LLM bot to talk about my health. Um, I only want to use it that it's used for health and not suddenly that my insurance company is also using it um, for something else to like track the prices and things like that. And I also want to make sure that um, in the future, um, changes that maybe happen around the processes where data is stored, that, that I understand um, how do I get informed about these things. Let's say a company goes bankrupt and it gets buy, bought by another company. I want to know where all this data comes from. And obviously, if we look at all these things, this seems quite complex. And um, to define all of this um, is obviously very complex. It's hard. It involves a lot of different people and process and things like that. So um, really, the thing is about how can we make sure that this is all done? And what has happened, of course, we have regulators. And the regulators say, hey, yes, let's regulate this thing. Like We can define a process on how this all needs to happen, things like that. And obviously, you already know things like GDPR happened. The European Union was one of the very first ones that actually started very good things um, around this and created regulations around these things. Because, yeah, be honest, regulators like to regulate. So let's create a regulation around this. And other countries started as well. So we then have California, um, not actually a country, it's more a state, um, but it's big enough to be its own country. So California has created the CTPA, Canada created another thing called the PPEDA, then Brazil and India and China. So basically 
instead of having one rule that works for the global, now you actually have to work with each individual laws of every country and everybody's different. And yes, they're copying some stuff of each other. But I think what the regulators try to do is to make it easier for us as the consumers. It's completely crazy. Like it's very hard to know um, what is actually used and which applies now and stuff like that. So I don't really think it's actually helped in any way, all these regulations. Yes, some of the things are really good, but now we just have a lot of different regulations that we need to accept. And one of the really things we have to understand is a lot of these regulations, they don't really apply to chatbots and LLMs. And I want to explain why. So in regular fields, like a lot of times, if you read these regulations, they talk about forms where I enter my data. So let's say I fill out a, co a contact form and the form specifically asks me for my first name, my last name, and my birth date, for example, and maybe my um, the name of my children, let's say that. Um, and in, in a form, it's very obvious as me as a user, which data do I give to the, to the field and how, how it is used. And actually some fields can tell me immediately how is each data used for what purposes and stuff like that. And that works for regular fields. The problem is chat interfaces are just one really big text field. Like there's not a specific level of me knowing what data they're entering. And that means that actually specifically in chat interfaces, massive amounts and a lot of unknown type of personal data is entered into these chat interfaces. So um, it gets very easy that suddenly if you chat with these chatbots that they ask you um, for like very personal data. Let's say you are in a health context and I need some, and I need some support um, for let's say um, I fell and I'm hurt and I need, I need to ask a chatbot about specific things. Or um, let's say I'm using it uh, more in a, in a context of doc bots. Um, so let's say I'm asking specific API keys and things like that. And then suddenly I enter API keys and stuff like that. So it's very hard to know what personal data is actually entered and how they're used. Um, and so that's a problem um, where a lot of these regulations work with forms, with chatbots. It's very unclear how all of this works. So a lot, a lot of people think the data actually works is that you as the user, you have some data and let's use OpenAI. Like OpenAI is currently obviously the ones that everybody uses or most people are using for AI related things. And so people just think that data goes to OpenAI. And yeah, we'll see that this unfortunately is not very true. So, but let's go through that. But that's if you ask people, hey, what happens with the data that you enter into this OpenAI chat field? They think it goes to OpenAI and it stays there and maybe it's even not stored. So, and then you actually go to OpenAI, like you go to their security website and it says, okay, OpenAI complies with GDPR. And you're like, hmm, all right, that's, that sounds good, right? Like that's the regulators created some regulations and it's GDPR, so it should all be fine. Like my data should be safe. My data should be um, clearly where it's used. Um, unfortunately, I had to learn, um, and I honestly, like I was one of them as well, but I had to learn that, yeah, unfortunately, just because they say GDPR, doesn't actually mean really anything. Um, and we only can really understand of what is happening with our data with reading through the privacy policy. And unfortunately, yes, this is lawyer text, um, meaning it's quite hard to understand. You need to read, I had to read it multiple times. But over time, you actually get some things. And I want to show you some excerpts from that and um, what they're actually saying. So keep in mind, they're saying that GDPR compatible or compliant, but their privacy policy talks about like, that they provide personal information to vendors and service providers. And that can be customer service, cloud service, email, web analytics, other information. So like, why does a web analytics company know, need my personal information? Um, I don't know, but OpenAI thinks that's a good idea. Or they say, oh, we share your personal information with government. Like, they don't specify which government, and they don't say in which specific context. They just say, we may do that. So whatever I give to OpenAI, they can use in other places or they can give to government authorities. And in terms of jurisdictions, they say it will be processed in the United States, but it can also be disclosed to any other body in other jurisdictions. And again, it's not actually defined um, that um, where these jurisdictions actually are happening in. So again, this is quite um, scary. And so if we actually look at the subprocessors, so they actually list some of their subprocessors. But if you look into this, there's a couple of very weird things. First of all, there's a subprocessor called OpenAI Affiliates. 
And I tried to look this up. It's undefined what this exactly is, who that is, what are these companies are doing, are these like, so it just say, oh, there's another company called OpenAI Affiliates that does service support. And it's like, okay. Um, and then there's another company called TaskUS that runs worldwide. So basically your data can go anywhere, any, anywhere wide. And they just say, okay, this is for use to support safety and monitoring, which honestly can apply to anything. Like, um, and they clearly say like, this is customer data. So they will send customer data worldwide to these other companies without really clear what type of data is sent. They basically keep the right to send anything anywhere. And yeah, I looked like a dog. The dog over here is like, what the hell is gonna happen? So if you go back to our diagram, yes, this is happening if you enter user data in OpenAI, but what is actually happening is they are just forwarding it to all these other companies out there. Microsoft, OpenAI affiliates, again, still don't know what this is, Task US, government authorities, industry peers, or basically out of third parties. So yeah, there goes your personal data. They can use this for whatever they want. So yeah, um, <clears throat> not to paint the too dark a picture, but I feel like, yes, this cannot be the case. This is quite bad and we should work against um, this. All right, so let's look outside. Let's look at outside of OpenAI. Um, and actually, if you reach out to OpenAI and ask specifically about that, one of the things they tell you is like, you should use Azure OpenAI. Or some other people that I've talked to told me like, oh, you can just use Hugging Face. So let's look at these specific ones, um, <clears throat> how they can actually help us. And I have to say, hint, yeah, they're not much better. Um, unfortunately, um, they're not going to be there. <clears throat> All right, so let's look into Azure OpenAI. So first of all, if you go to Azure OpenAI and you look at their documentation, they have this really nice box that says um, that any of the data <clears throat> will not be available to other customers. It will not be available to OpenAI. It's not used to improve models. So it sounds, sounds very good, right? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? They can't do anything at all. Like that, that sounds really good. Only that when you actually scroll further down, <clears throat> you realize that they do content filtering. And basically, they read every single prompt that you sent them, goes through their content filtering system, um, where they say authorized Microsoft employees may assess the content. So they can read everything you sent them. Um, now, it's maybe contained within Microsoft, but why does somebody from Microsoft need to read all the content that I sent them? Like, why is that necessary? Um, they obviously say, oh, it's to prevent abusing and things like that, but they don't do this for any of the other services that they have. So again, it's, it's I don't want to say that they want to do bad stuff, but it's just like, mm, it just feels a very weird feeling around this. So yeah. Um, I feel cheated um, that initially they say nothing is happening and then the further you go down, you realize that there's actually content filtering and people are reading everything. So let's go to Hugging Face. Um, Hugging Face, which is uh, more like a GitHub of AI and LLM models. So you can find most common LLM models you can all find there. Um, and they also have a hosting solution. So where you can actually host your LLMs uh, with them. And again, they say, hey, no problem. Hugging Face is GDPR compliant. Should all be fine, right? Like, has to be good. And GDPR, one of the hardest regulations. Again, and actually, if you go to their website, if you scroll a bit further, like they say, like, oh, you can pick your cloud and you can select a region close to your data in compliance with your requirements. Sounds great. Like, I can choose the US, um, I can choose EU, Frankfurt, like, it's all great. But then again, like I said before, read the privacy policy. And in there, they are literally saying that um, while they store it in the United States, it can also be in any other country. And by using services of Hugging Face, you consent to transfer outside of your country. And they don't define which country, they don't define which data. They just say, okay, with whatever, if you're using us, basically your data can leave the country of the United States and it can leave your own country. So yeah. It sounds very much like this, that this is fine dog. And it's like, yeah, it's it's problem. No, no problem. Don't worry. It's all good. But yeah, in the end, again, as soon as you give data to them, they don't even define where they send it. They just say anywhere in the world. So now what? We saw this when we started doing with AI a couple of months ago. And we realized that why we obviously wanted to use all these things. And I think that's the problem. Like in the beginning, 
when new technologies come up, everybody's very excited about them. Everybody wants to use them. And unfortunately, people, they forget to actually look into what the data is used for. They forget what to use, what these services are really reeling. They're starting to use them without really thinking. And so we saw this, we saw all these privacy concerns and we said, that can't be the case. We need to find a better solution than basically giving up all our data um, to all these companies. And so we have been working on such a solution. And basically what we're wishing is, or what we're building, we're working on is self-hosted private LLMs. Basically, we're gonna use all these open source LLMs that are out there. And so there's many different ones of them. And the good thing is because they're open source, you can actually run them um, by your own. So they're not sending any data anywhere else. And also important, it's not only the LLMs that are gonna be open source, it's actually the complete stack. So for whatever we're building, we wanna make sure that the hosting infrastructure, the Kubernetes, the vector DBs, the LLMs, everything needs to be completely open source. So we wanna make sure that the complete stack is there. Um, and um, the other thing that we wanna make sure is that everything is end-to-end -end encrypted. So that means that it's possible from actually encrypting the data from the browser, it's encrypted there, sent to the to the servers and it's only decrypted in um, at the LLM point so that even if somebody along the way is looking at data and things like that let's say a CDM provider or something like that that they cannot um, read the data at all so that's one other thing and we want to make sure that you can sp specify specific countries where this is hosted or maybe even on premise so um, that if you have your own infrastructure and you work with very highly critical data that you can also run this on there. And there's no logging or any data storage needed at all. Um, so that's obviously like, why, why is that necessary? Um, and then of course, not have any weird sub processors um, that are involved at all. So that you as the owner of the data know specifically. Now, of course, it would be really cool to actually show something, um, but we are, it's not fully ready yet, but we're looking for customers or people that have the same concerns that we have and we're working on MVPs and proof of concepts. Um, and I'm happy really to say that I'm working with Pronovix as well on this, um, which is really cool to work on, on these things together. Um, but yeah, we're looking for more people out there, companies, teams that have the same concerns and that maybe we're not aware of all the things around OpenAI specifically or all the other vendors. And yeah, we have a specific page for uh, around this AI hosting on the Maisie.io. So I don't want to sell you anything, but if you are interested in these things, um, please reach out. Would love to talk to you, understand your your needs. Um, because in the end, I really believe we need to work together on this. We need to work as an open source community to provide these services and yeah, to create stuff that works against these data Krakens out there that just want to um, suck up all our data and use it for whatever reason. We believe um, that should not happen. And so that's why we're trying to do it all in the open source. Um, but we need partners, we need friends that work on this together. So if you're one of them, please reach out. I would love to talk to you to understand your needs and see how we can work together. And that's it. Um, yeah. If Thank you, Michael. <laughs> so um, really, um, well, it's, it's great like digging through uh, the <laughs> terms and conditions like, oh, look at this.